sections I've mentioned editing and post, which allows you to tweak your photos after you've taken them. This can help out with consistency in all your photos, or just enhancing the overall image. Now you don't need any of those fancy software like Photoshop or Lightroom, because you can do just as good with any free software. And the ones I like to use the most are actually the free version of Photoshop and Lightroom. Honestly, I've tested several free editing software, but none of them really compare to the simplicity of the mobile versions of those top-of-the-line Adobe software. Again, these are completely free off the App Store, which is great if you're photographing from your phone. I personally use an Android emulator for my PC to edit stuff, and to be honest, this is really all you need. Lightroom has a really nice interface with lots of useful tools for editing, and while it lacks a lot of the pro features like selection ranges, histograms, and layers, I have to say it gets the job done. The first thing I do when I begin a new edit is play around with the exposure. This is really all about eyeing it and trying to find where the subject has just the right amount of light on it. After this, you can start playing with the curves, which is always a lot of fun for me, but the main focus is to try and find the range where the background is and enhance it. After that, try to even out any harsh shadows or highlights so you can see all the parts of the subject equally. As for color, I like desaturating the photo a bit and then upping the vibrance of whatever color is left. This allows you to bring out the most important colors of your subject since vibrance comes after saturation. Enhancing bits of your photo is fine, but at a point it starts to look artificial and fake, so if you're not sure, put the original and the new one side by side and see for yourself. When it comes to photo editing, the mobile version of Lightroom is kind of like the mobile version of Photoshop, but on steroids. However, Photoshop does have a decent blemish tool, which Lightroom requires payment for. This tool is really good for cleaning up little bits in your background or removing bits of fuzz from your subject. Anyway, here I have a photo I took a while ago. It's uh, calcanthite from the Planet Mine in Arizona, and I thought I'd just do a quick tutorial on how I would edit this. So if you see here, this part over here is pretty illuminated, but over here you have a lot of harsh shadows. So, as I said, the first thing to do is play with the exposure and try to see where you can see most of the mineral evenly. And don't worry about the background, because we can always change that later. But I'm thinking maybe around here is good, and then we can go in with the curves. Up here is the uh, highlight range. You can kind of see how the highlights are going up and down in luminance. And then the shadows are down here. So we want to bring up the shadows so we can see the, the other parts of the mineral, and maybe bring down the, the highlights so we can see everything evenly. Something like that. If you're doing a black background or a white background, you'd want to go to the extremes because, you know, black is down here and then white is up here. But then over here, we can put a node and then you see here, it makes everything a lot more black. Yeah, there's a line back here at the, uh, the edge of the glass. I did talk about that briefly in the background episode, but highlights are a bit harsh and bring those down a bit. So anyway, this is what we're left with. Um, it's pretty good. You can see everything pretty evenly. The reflection is pretty harsh, so what we can do there is go to Effects and add a vignette. So as you can see, it kind of adds like a dark ring around it. Um, and we can't really see it here because, I mean, it blends into the background, but if we make the midpoint a bit higher, feather it off a bit. Feather basically just means you're smoothing it out, making the transition from vignette to the photo a bit less harsh. So, you know, we can kind of leave it here, just so that we can see the, the subject a bit better. And then, I think before we go into the, the color, we should really crop it, because, I mean, it's mostly background right now. So, we'll crop it, maybe about this much. We'll lose a lot of the detail, but that's alright. So, the color, I spoke briefly about the temperature. I actually kind of like the temperature here. Maybe, maybe, it's looking a bit green around here. I'm not too worried about the, the temperature here. And it is very blue, so I don't want to make it too blue because it's going to start looking fake. But you know, maybe we could add a bit of a enhancement of the brightest colors and maybe bring down the colors that don't really matter, like this round stuff in here. You don't really need that. So there we go. So if we go to the previous image, that's what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. So you can definitely see how uh, we were able to even out the shadows, although we could actually bring up the shadows just a bit more. And there you go, we'll start to see a bit back here, but that's alright. 
and then bring down the blacks just so that we can't see any of the background. And there we go. Uh, if you want to sharpen the details, I don't really want to sharpen it because that does create a bit of noise and then you have to go into the whole noise reduction. Um, and I don't really want to get into that. I think the details in this are fairly sharp. So I think that's a pretty good finished product. We'll go to the before and after again. Uh, we definitely brought back a lot of the, the reflection and that's the thing. You don't want the reflection to overpower the actual mineral. You just want it to have like a bit of a, a cool little reflection effect. You don't want anything too out there. So yeah, that's the finished product. We'll go save to device and here it is. Anyway, that has been the editing episode of the series. If you found this useful, make sure to like and subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment with anything you think I missed. Click here for the playlist, and click here for the full five-episode compilation.